want to see you. Open our hearts, Lord. We want to know you. Open our ears, Lord. We need to hear you. Jesus, be revealed. Jesus, be revealed. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see you. In our hearts, Lord, we want to know you. Open our ears, Lord, we need to hear you. Jesus, be revealed. Jesus, be revealed. God is here. God is here. God is here. He is here. We draw near to see Jesus face to face. God is here, God is here, God is here, He is faithful. We draw near to see Jesus, oh Jesus be revealed. Good morning church. Once, once, once again, thank you for allowing us to lead you in worship. Open the gates, Lord. Open the gates, Lord. Reveal your glory. Open the nations. Establish your kingdom. Open the heavens. Corrupt your spirit, Jesus be revealed, Jesus be revealed. God is here, God is here, God is here, He is able. We draw near to see Jesus face to face. God is here, God is here, He is able. We draw near to see Jesus, oh Jesus, be revealed. God is here, God is here, God is here, He is able. We draw near to see Jesus face to face. God is here, God is here, He is faithful. We draw near to see Jesus, oh Jesus be
is able. We draw near to see Jesus face to face. God is here. God is here. God is here. He is faithful. We draw near to see Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Great is your faithfulness, O God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough. Your love and justice, God of Jacob. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along. So remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, your grace is enough. is enough for me. Remember your people, remember your children, remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough for me. Yeah, your grace, your grace is enough. Heaven reaches out to us. Your grace is enough for me. God, I sing. Your grace is enough. I am covered by in your love. Your grace is enough for me.
brokenness and wandering through all my fears and unbelief your faithfulness appears to me again through mountain top and valley low and every season this i know your goodness break at dawn will break again Are your mercies rising in this heart again? And my soul begins to say, They are new every morning, new every morning. It is your faithfulness. Your mercies are new every morning. Every morning, great is your faithfulness. Every good and perfect gift, in your endless grace you give, flowing from the Father's heart to mine. Beams of heaven as I go, through this wilderness below, the fullness of your love for all of time. Are your mercies rising in this heart again? And my soul begins to sing. They are new every morning, new every morning. Your mercies rising in this heart again. Are your mercies rising in this heart again? Are your mercies rising forever shining in this grateful heart again? They are new every morning. Your faithfulness, your mercies are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Your mercies are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness.
Amazing love that welcomes me, the kindness of mercy that bought with blood wholeheartedly my soul undeserving. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so good to
Thank you, Lord, once again for this time that uh, you've allowed us to come before you and worship you. We thank you for your word. We pray that uh, you be with us as we receive your word this morning. We just pray all these things in your name. Amen. 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 Good morning, VCPC family and those who are watching online this morning. So good to have you. Uh, trust that you uh, enjoy last week. I know that uh, some people experience some snow around. Uh, there are some places where we don't see any snow at all. So I don't know where you are. Uh, trust that you had a wonderful week last week. We'll continue our sermon on the secrets of success. In Luke, um, Jesus turned to his disciples and shared a message directed to them amid the crowd. Radical teachings on blessings that come from a godly living and sorrows that comes from worldly living. So Jesus used four sets of comparisons and contrasts in his message. And I sum it up for you here in a table of the do's and the don'ts that Jesus talks about. So here is the uh, table. And I uh, put it on one side with the do's, the blessings, and the don'ts, the sorrow. On one side, it says poor. For the kingdom of God is yours. Rich. For you have yours, o- your only happiness now. Hunger. For you will be satisfied. Full. For a time of awful Hunger awaits for you. Uh, and and um, uh, sorrow for, for, a, for in due time, you will laugh. And laugh for your laughing will turn to mourning. Wow, that's heavy. And here it says uh, re- uh, sorrow. Uh, or rejected for a great reward awaits you in heaven. Popular for their ancestors also praised false prophets. Well, the truth is this. Successful living is God's side up living. All the disciples are to pursue God's kingdom value and and forego the world's values. You see, Jesus wants to bless you with a successful life. So Jesus says that four radicals teaching to to revolutionize your daily living. It says here, point number one. Poverty brings eternal eternal life. And Jesus said this in Luke chapter 6, verse 20. God blesses you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. You see, the Greek word for poor here is uh, tohos. It means uh, uh, being desolate. Uh, with no ability to provide themselves. 
and, and completely dependent on others to supply their needs. And so Jesus here is not saying that uh, you are blessed because you are poor, literally, but blessed you if you are if you realize that you're spiritually poor and dependent on God alone. So to enter the kingdom of God means that you are spiritually bankrupt. Totally submit to Jesus as your king. It also means that to submit to his authority, to submit to his leadership, to his kingship, and, and, and every area of your life. Nothing you could do to get your place in heaven. It means that your value system uh, will have to change completely to the kingdom value system. Blessings or happiness are not found in this world temporal value system. Blessings and happiness are not found in this temporal material riches. And that's why Jesus said, carry on and says in verse 24, what sorrow awaits you who are rich for you have your only happiness now. Happiness is found in the everlasting grace and joy and peace of our Lord and Savior. Everything that we have now, everything that you see, everything that we own right now is temporal. It, it can be lose. Uh, uh, you can lose them at any time. I remember one story in uh, 1975, six armed gunmen broke into the deposit box in London Bank and stole valuables worth more than seven million. One lady uh, whose stolen jewelry was appraised 500,000 reportedly cried. Everything I had was in there. My whole life was in that box. Oh, isn't it sad to hear that she lost her life saving in, in, in a place she thought it was safe. You see, if you want to receive the kingdom of God, you need to admit and recognize your spiritual bankruptcy and then come to God for his grace and dependence upon him and him alone. So friends, when you realize you are spiritually poor, uh, you will not be arbitrary, arrogant, overly confident. Uh, you will not be complacent, uh, not too proud or seek material enjoyment or material blessings in this world. Instead, you will be like a child. Your heart will be broken, contrite. You will be humble, modest. You will draw close to God and you will accept his truth. You see, spiritual poverty is the humble spirit. It says that any good in us comes from not us, but our master and provider. You see, Hudson Taylor once says this. Uh, he was scheduled to speak at a large Presbyterian church in Melbourne, uh, Australia. The moderator of the service introduced this missionary in eloquent and glowing terms. He told the large congregation all that Taylor had accomplished in China and then present him as our illustrious guests and Taylor stood quietly for a moment and then opened his message by saying dear friends I am the little servant of an illustrated illustrated master people of God with humility wants to succeed and help their teams help others along the way. 
They, they put their pride aside and to think of others first. And that's why C.S. Lewis says this, humility is not thinking less of yourself. It is thinking of yourself less. Let me repeat it one more time. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It is thinking of yourself less. You see, if you are successful, when you are success, you are successful when you do these things. Help others to succeed and meet their goals along the way. You ask questions to find out more about them. And you listen to their response. And you take responsibility to admit any wrong actions or wrongdoings or any words, wrong words that cause harm. You acknowledge and you praise and you appreciate everyone who helped you along the way. And you value others and you treat people with respect. You share what you know and, and you learn from people. You, you're not afraid of others that are ahead of you. And you serve other people first. You yourself go last. You're blessed beyond measure in this life if you do that. You, your soul will be so full and you have this abundant life. In the next life, all the riches, all the glorious fullness are waiting for you in heaven. Do you know that, friends? So teaching number two, hunger brings bountiful satisfaction. And Jesus says, God blesses you who are hungry now, for you will be satisfied. The Greek word here for hungry Hunger is uh, penal. It, it, it means literally an acute lack of food. It can also mean that um, a, a, an exhaustion caused by a military campaign or desert journey. So in reality, hunger is, is not just for food. Hunger can be many things. It can be money. It can be a job, your, your love. It can be uh, your security, approval, whatever that may be. Anything, everything. But Jesus here compares our spiritual craving for God to our body craving for physical, emotional, and even intellectual nourishment. Our body is created so that it requires food and drink to sustain life. Food and drink fuel our body so that we can function properly. And our body will cease to function and die without them. Think about famine. You see, our spiritual life is the same. It's created to crave for God for his, his grace, his goodness, his holiness, his, 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 his wonderful, bountiful righteousness. And without all of these things, we cannot function. We cannot function without God. And, and David, listen to David. He has this spiritual craving for God in these passages. Listen to uh, Psalm 42. As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, oh God. I thirst for God, the living God. When can I go and stand before him? Wow. Listen to Psalm 63. Oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. Life apart from the living God is empty, vacuous, and depleted. 
Our soul is thirsty and our body is aching. And you feel so discomfort and weak. And so you want to satisfy your insensatiable craving. So what do we do? If we're not careful, we look for wrong places to find it. And that's why Jesus says, what sorrow awaits you who are fat and prosperous now for a time of awful hunger awaits you. Well, you may be well fed right now. You may be satisfied with food for now, but it will not last forever. All of the physical, emotional, intellectual nourishments are temporal. It will never satisfy our unquenchable craving. The greatest tragedy is that our spiritual famine without hunger and dryness without thirst for God. J. Paul Getty described his own emptiness. He made his first million dollars by the age of 24. And his, in his book, How to Be Rich, he writes about how he retired, plundered to full till into the Southern California, L.A. Hollywood world of fun and folly. But he then relates, it took me a while to wake up to the fact that I was only wasting time and that I was bored. By the end of 1918, I was thoroughly fed up. Early 1919, I was back in the oil business, not a little abashed by the I told you so smile I got from my father when I informed him that having retired at the age of 24, I was coming out of retirement at the age of 26. No wealth, no career, no entertainment can satisfy our unquenchable craving in our own soul. And that's why Jesus said in John chapter 6, 35, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirst. They will never be thirsty. Jesus is the bread of life. He is the living water. Bits by bits, sip by sip, he will feed us. He will sustain our soul. So Jesus is the word of God, and he alone can nourish and satisfy our deepest longing of our souls. We will never go hungry and thirsty again. He alone can transform our lives and renew our minds and restore our soul. The key is that to keep on hungering for Jesus, to keep on hungering for Jesus. Ask Jesus to give you this enormous appetite to desire him. Imagine your life is completely filled with his grace, his um, uh, goodness, his righteousness. Uh, you know, this will he will provide you opportunity to stand up against injustice, racism, discrimination, uh, any child abuse, any human or, or, or child uh, sex trafficking, anything like that. He will give you opportunities and you will be a great success when you look for other believers with the same hunger and same vision and, and you will be blessed by Jesus in turn, and you will become a blessing to others. And you will find ways to prevent, to, to, to defend, to liberate these people with Jesus' righteousness. Jesus can energize you. He can motivate you to do greater things for him. He will lead you into even more satisfaction in this life. So my prayer for you is this, when you uh, 
have this greater appetite for Jesus, you will be satisfied. And teaching number three, sorrow brings insurmountable joy. And Jesus said that God blesses you who weep now, for in due time you will laugh. And Solomon echoes Jesus saying here, a time to cry and a time to laugh. You see, the Greek word here uh, for weep is uh, kaleo. Uh, it means cry, uh, it means uh, mourning, uh, lament, grief at parting, or sorrow for the dead. What Jesus is not saying to his disciple that you are blessed if you're extremely sad and, and, and wear this frown face every day. It is true that life on this earth is punctured with sorrow, sadness, and mourning. But being a disciple of Jesus, we should be joyful, not sorrowful experience, right? After all, we believe and we sing joy to the world. The Lord has come and joy to the world. The Savior reigns. Repeat the sounding joy and the wonders of his love, right? And that's why Jesus said to his disciples in John 16, verse 33, I have told you all these so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Wow. Jesus here promised that his disciples and us will have many trials, many sorrows, as long as we are on earth, as long as we're on earth. At the same time, we will have this peace and triumph in Jesus, living in this world and yet dwelling in the kingdom of God. And while we're on this earth, Jesus is calling his people to weep for, for our own sins, for, for the, uh, over the, the, uh, the unsaved, the sins for others, uh, the sins of our society, and, and those who are, uh, 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 who are going through uh, eternal darkness, uh, those who are going to uh, have a lot of needs those who are hurting, those who are suffering uh, over uh, natural disasters, social injustice, unfairness, child abuse, adultery, divorce, whatever pain that they're going through right now. I remember, I remember uh, someone from our Toronto church uh, invited a couple uh, to come to church in, a, in one summer. Um, and, and her husband would drop her off at church on Friday night, but refused to come in. And he would rather sit in the car than coming into the church. And I remember in our small group, we pray for him every Friday night. And his lost soul for months and months and months. And then one extreme cold Friday night. He, he dropped his wife off at the church, and then he sat at the parking lot waiting for her. But it was minus 15 outside with heavy snow. He stayed in the car, I think, no more than 30 minutes. Finally, he came into the church frozen, and, and we welcomed him. And, he, and we gave him uh, uh, hot drinks to warm him up. You know what? Since that night, both of them came to our Friday night and Sunday morning services. And through many, many prayers, they came to faith and they were baptized together. Oh, we were so happy. We were so happy when we would rejoice with them. You know, even to these days, this family still goes to church. So friends, commit your friends, the unchurched, the hurting, the needies in prayers. And one day, our godly sorrow for them will turn into joy. 
but some people will not see this glorious day. Some people never got serious about the spiritual matters in their life. They don't take God and eternal life seriously. They, they laugh it off as a joke. And that's why Jesus warned against these people uh, that, that want to feel good, uh, to do whatever they want, uh, to, to, to find whatever entertained them. And that's why Jesus said in verse 25b, what sorrow awaits you who laugh now? For your laughing will turn to mourning and sorrow. One day, God will expose and, and judge them for their wrongdoing. By then, it will be too late for them to do anything about it. But, but Jesus does not wish anyone to perish, but he wishes all to come to repentance. And, and that's why you see that Jesus wept. And then he raised Lazarus from the dead. And he raised a few people as well along the way. And he healed the sick. Jesus wants his disciple, you and I, to learn how to mourn and how to fill with love and compassion for the loss. You, uh, we will have eternal success when we make sure we give generously. And we use every opportunity and all of our resources to bring yourself into fellowship with some new friends and win them for Jesus, right? And, and you will receive this insurmountable joy when they come to faith uh, together and all of us will win other people for Jesus. So last week, Tony our Tony Wong, brought to my attention that we have another opportunity to send Bibles for the migrants in Persian Gulf uh, through the, our PAOC website. Uh, let me show you this page right here. Uh, I have this page. I found this page on our PAOC website, and there's the link. So please go to this website, friends, and for more information. I, I know you can do it. I know you can help. We can give these migrants opportunities to know Jesus. And Jesus promised us that in the future, we will escape sorrow. So one day, God will take away our sinful nature, and we will never sin again. And one day, he will make right every wrong. He will gather his people in his holy city. One day, all of our pain, our sorrow, our suffering will come to an end. And one day, our laughters will be heard on every street of gold. And there will be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain. We weep now. But, friends, we look forward one day to eternal joy of that glorious day in heaven. And teaching number four, rejection brings immeasurable reward. And Jesus said this, what blessings await you when people hate you and exclude you and mock you and curse you as evil because you follow the son of man. When that happens, be happy, be happy. Yes, leap for joy, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, their ancestors treated the ancient prophets the same way. Jesus is speaking of a specific kind of rejection. The rejection for the sake of the gospel and for the sake of Jesus Christ. You know, through the centuries, many disciples of Jesus suffered uh, violence, uh, persecution, uh, excommunication, uh, slander, insult, torture, even martyr for their faith. Uh, Jesus also said that uh, to his disciple, if you are persecuted 
because of me. Because they persecute me, therefore they will persecute you also. The truth of the matter is that those who live for and like Jesus will be persecuted and rejected. But fear not, my friends, fear not. Jesus promises that your reward is going to be great in heaven. Uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, executed by Hitler, once said that suffering then is the badge of true discipleship. Disciples is not above his master. This is why Luther reckoned suffering among the mark of the true church. And one of the memorandum drew up in preparation for the Osbert Confession similarly defines the church as the community of those who are persecuted, martyred for the gospel's sake. Discipleship means allegiance to the suffering Christ. And it is therefore not at all surprising that Christian should be called upon to suffer. In fact, it is a joy and a token of his grace. Bonhoeffer is correct. It is a joy because Jesus told his disciples to rejoice in their suffering. In the, and, and their names will be written in heaven. Jesus' disciple took his teaching to heart. And, and Luke reported that the, the Sanhedrin beat them. And in Acts chapter 5, verse 41, Luke said, The apostle left the high council rejoicing that God had, count, God had counted them worthy to suffer disgrace. For the name of Jesus. Then on the flip side, Jesus said that in verse 26. What sorrow awaits you who are praised by the crowds. For their ancestors also praise false prophets. Well, nothing wrong when Christians are well thought of by the unchurched people. Uh, but Christians don't seek or live for popularity in this world, right? We use whatever popularity that we have as a platform to shine for Jesus. And there will be times, though, when we share the good news and people, the unchurched people, will reject, will exclude, will mock, will curse us. Uh, during uh, a stressful time in Charles Spurgeon's life, when he was depressed by criticism, his wife took a sheet of paper, print the eight Beatitudes from Matthew 5 on a large print, old English script, and then tacked it to the ceiling over his bed. She wanted the reality to saturate his mind morning and evening. Everyone who lives righteously will be persecuted. Everyone who lives righteously will be persecuted. Surgeon's wife was right. Everyone who lives righteously will be persecuted, will be rejected. And of course, not to the same degree as the, the Islam, Islamic or, or communist countries. But throughout the century, friends, Christians have been persecuted, rejected, and martyred. We talked about that last Sunday. Uh, Christianity grew from 12 people to 2.5 billion around the world. The truth is that uh, persecution actually helped to grow God's church and his people. And that's why Paul says, when I am weak, and then I am strong. Jesus will manifest his strength to those who face persecution and rejection. If you're persecuted, if you're suffered and you're rejected for the sake of Jesus, friends, you're blessed. You are blessed. You should view that as, 
a measure of success, a badge of honor. A diamond cannot be polished without friction, nor a man, uh, a, a man, godly character without conflict. You see, difficult circumstances like persecution or rejection happen for our own good. It teaches us to see God's faithfulness, His grace, and His blessings upon our lives. You can be a believing Christian. You can trust God for your salvation. You can even pray and do what the Bible instructs you to do. But I learned that difficult situations, circumstances that may get may not get better. For maybe weeks or months or even years, friends, let tough time like persecution, like rejection, develop you to be a person of success. If you hang in there, friends, don't give up your faith and hope in God. I guarantee you, it will change you, like coal under high pressure. When you face high pressure of difficulties, uh, 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 um, rejection, persecution, and if you stay faithful to God, friends, God is with us in our trial, in our hardship. He will turn you into a precious diamond. It will develop you to be a person of faith. Endurance, stability, strength, and even greatness. Friends, God used trials, difficulties to shape our faith and character. And, and God can, can turn all things, good things, bad things, and make them together for good, for his good, for those who love him. Amen? God's salvation plan is going to succeed. And nothing is going to stop his plan for move, from, from moving forward. Jesus is going to build his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So rejection will bring rewards in heavenly kingdom. It will bring blessings to you today. So grow spiritually, friends, as you are rejected, as you are excluded, as you are mocked, as you're insulted and cursed by people for the sake of Jesus Christ, you're blessed. You're blessed. You see, persecution continues to rise around the world. Uh, some governments use COVID-19 restriction as tools for, of uh, repression. Uh, Open Door 2021 report shows that number of Christians killed increased by 60% in 2020, mostly Islamic uh, nation, uh, uh, Islamic violence against Nigerian Christian and all these uh, anti-Christian government uh, uh, places like uh, China, India, you know, uh, Iran or so, uh, use COVID-19 restriction to persecute Christians. About 4,761 Christians were killed for their faith last year. And about half of them, about 2,200, was murdered in Nigeria. Christian face the most persecution worldwide because we are the largest minority faith in many, many countries. Jesus here is teaching us the kingdom values are so different than the worldly perspective. You don't seek after riches, prosperity, entertainment, popularity, just like the world does. A successful life is God's side up, the right side up living. And those who enter the kingdom of God will experience spiritual poverty, hunger, sorrow, uh, and even rejection. But friends, one day, one day in heaven, we will experience eternal life. 
we will experience bountiful satisfaction, insurmountable joy, and immeasurable rewards. Until then, friends, keep your eyes on Jesus. He is the author and perfecter of our faith. And he will have absolute control. He has absolute control at all time. Don't be afraid to trust in him. So friends, share with confidence the hope, the living hope within us to others, the unsaved, the unchurched. Set them free, set the captives free and bring blessings, peace, joy, comfort to the wearies and the fearful for the sake of Jesus Christ. Can we pray? Can we pray? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for his blessings upon all of his followers, believers. Thank you so much, Jesus. We want your success. We want to be successful for you, Jesus. And, and I know that, Jesus, you have experienced all that we mentioned today, uh, the, the, the spiritual poverty, the hunger, the sorrow, even the rejection to the point where you die on the cross for our sin. So help us this morning to learn from you today, oh Jesus. Give us the courage to be willingly to go through all of these experiences just like you did, Jesus. So Lord, I know our rewards is waiting for us in heaven. But meanwhile, give us the courage, the strength, to go through all of the poverty, hunger, sorrow, and rejection. Thank you, Jesus, for, for allowing us to go through all of these things just like you, so that we can have a taste, a glimpse of what you have gone through on earth. Thank you so much, God. We look forward to one day to seeing you in heaven being with us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Good morning. Church family, and so good to see you all. I hope that you were encouraged by Pastor Rex speaking on successful living. BCPC will have our online ACBM on Sunday, March 14th at 2 p.m. Uh, with our consultation to the PC, uh, PAOC district, we will not be having the option of absentee ballots due to the pandemic situation that restricts us to have an online meeting and voting. So please register to attend the ACBM by calling 604-876-1221 or email to info at bcpc.ca. Once you register, we will email you the Zoom meeting link to attend the ACBM. For those who will attend the online ACBM, but cannot do electronic voting, please call 604-876-1221 and leave a voice message. Our church administrator will contact you with the pre-election day voting procedures. Today is Mission Sunday. Your tithes and offerings can be made at the church website at bcpc.ca via Interact eTransfer, pre-authorized debit or credit cards. May the Lord bless you abundantly with your giving. We have started our pre-service um, prayer meetings at, on Sunday at 8.30 a.m. Uh, you can uh, email to v, info at vcpc.ca to receive the Zoom meeting link. Before we pray, I'd like to share with you verses found in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4 of the NIV. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms 
with every spiritual blessings in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Let us pray. We thank you for the message today. We thank you, Lord, that we can come to your throne with worship through the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that um, in our hearts we want to pursue your kingdom value hmm. and let go of the world's value. May your blessings be upon us. We continue to pray for everyone at BCPC, our pastors, church and daycare staff, board members, leaders, volunteers, and the rest of this family. That's your purpose be fulfilled through us. May we seek you and trust in you for guidance. We pray for believers around the world that they can share your hope to the non-believers. We pray that your will be done. Guide us, Lord, this week. We pray all these things in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. Have a good week. I welcome you back next Sunday. If you wanted to stay around, you can unmute yourself and then chat to around uh, 10 minutes before 11 when the uh, Chinese speaking service will prepare for their service. <laughs>